Hi guys, welcome to another Rope Pilgrim car review and today we have the very very good looking Skoda Octavia Combi RS on review with us today and as you can see, this is a sports wagon. Um, this is not to be confused with the regular Skoda Octavia Combi which runs a 1.5 litre mild hybrid drivetrain. This is of course the full fat 2 litre performance version and uh, I'm not sure about you guys but generally I am quite fond of performance sports wagons because I think they have this unique blend of performance and practicality uh, which means that if you're only having one car in your arsenal you know this is the kind of car that will fit the bill. For today's review we are going to check out its exterior we are going to jump inside the cabin and look around a little bit and uh, of course we are going to go take the car for a drive. Alright, so before we get on with this review, if you are thinking about selling your car in Singapore or consigning it for sale, be sure to check out the link in the description box below because through that link and with just a few tiny details, we will be able to provide you the best quote for your car or help you consign it for sale. There are actually no fees or obligations to do so. So if you're thinking about selling your car, be sure to get a quote from us. And with that, let's get on with the review. Right, so jumping into the review, this is the exterior of the car and I love the car in this grey colour. I think it looks super cool and I think it looks super sporty. Um, all around the car, you do get some uh, RS badging, uh, front and the back and I think on the seats as well. Uh, down the side, you get 19-inch wheels as standard. I'm not particularly fond of these designs, but of course, you can sort them out for rims of your choice uh, after you purchase the car. So the entire footprint of the car, despite being a wagon, isn't too large. So it's definitely manageable to own around town and around a uh, city environment like Singapore. Here at the back, got very nice silhouette. And uh, for those of you who are familiar with uh, Skoda cars of old, you'll realise that the older headlamps are, the tail lights are generally quite square, but these ones have been redesigned to be quite angular and quite pretty. And uh, as I've said, you've got some more RS badging at the side and the rear here, sorry. Um, looking into the trunk of the car, you have a very nicely sized boot. And this floor is also variable in height so you can actually adjust the height of the boot floor and also decrease the loading lip of the car this is of course a retractable is it retractable yes it's retractable so you've got a retractable boot cover as well for better loading aperture there we go so with that, let's jump inside the car and check out the cabin of this vehicle. Alright, so this is the cabin of the Skoda Octavia Combi RS. I'm going to start the car up right now because it's super hot outside. So we definitely need some air conditioning here. Um, so I'm going to... So let's start with this, the, 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 the center console and the uh, infotainment unit. Uh, after all, I am going to adjust the climate control. So, um, what you have down here is actually a row of shortcuts um, that allow you to assess things like your driving mode your and your climate control quite easily. So, you don't have to cycle through a whole bunch of menus. Um, you can assess them quite easily. So, right now, I'm in uh, my climate control settings. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase my fan speed for a little bit of ventilation. There we go. And then all you need to do to retract back into the main menu is to click the button again and then you are back at your main menu. So this system um, is a nice 10 inch display and I think it looks a little bit better than what you would get on some of the Volkswagen models. Um, I'm not sure why but this one just looks a little bit more uh, like a lot, like a bit of effort has been put in. So I think that's pretty cool. The um, Volume is actually controlled through a slide bar here. So you can slide your finger over to increase the volume. Can I? Yes, yes. There we go. Slide. It's not exactly working now, but maybe it's because I don't have a uh, audio source that's plugged in. But generally speaking, when you're driving, you can just actually slide your hand across here to increase and decrease the volume, which is very cool. Or you can also do it through your multi-function steering wheel right here which of course has your RS badging as well this being a RS model 
Um, up front here, you do have a digital driver's display. Your temperature gauge and your fuel gauge isn't exactly um, digital. It's still sort of analog, but you don't really notice it anyway. Um, most of the dials are still digital. And um, this is of course customizable through the controls on your multifunction steering wheel. So you can actually adjust uh, what sort of information you want on the dials. So that's pretty cool. The entire interface is also quite modern. Um, it has this carbon fiberish backlay, which I think really ties in with the whole sporty image of the car. Um, around the car as well, I think it's a very nice looking dash. Um, this has a carbon fiber finish. I don't think this is actual carbon fiber, but as far as carbon fiber finishes go, this one looks quite nice. It doesn't look overly cheap and uh, it looks quite authentic actually. Um, it's also done in a sort of a matte finish, which is quite different from the gloss finish carbon fibers that you see on other cars. On the dash, you've got this nice Alcantara feeling dashboard, which extends all the way across. Uh, and this comes with red stitching as well, uh, which accentuates the RS uh, persona a little bit more. Right, further down in the con center console, you've got wireless charging pad, you've got two USB-Cs, and of course, you've got this very nice uh, drive selector, which I think among the VW Blue cars, Skoda probably would have one of the nicer ones. Um, even nicer than the Audi ones actually, to be honest. Um, you've got two cup holders here, although they are quite small sized. Uh, you've got your parking brake, your auto hold, and you've got a nice little compartment here to keep your key. And of course, uh, underneath here, you've got more storage. You've got a nice size storage bin here to keep other knickknacks. And I think the highlight of this car is probably the seats because you've got this very nice RS Design Sports seats. Um, they're not exactly hugging you per se, but they do look the part and I think they do offer a little bit more support than the regular ones um, anyway. So um, I think this is all very well done. Uh, with that, let's jump into the back of the car and check out what the back seat is like. All right, so this is the rear section of the Skoda Octavia Combi RS. And this seat is in my regular driving position and I am 175 meters tall. And this is the amount of legroom that I have. So as you can see, it is quite a roomy car and it is actually very decent for use as a family car. Now, um, in this upright sitting position, I have um, not a lot of headroom, just a little bit here. Um, but if I were to sit, sit in a more regular or more natural position, then uh, headroom is actually no issue at all. And I actually forgot to show you this earlier while I was at the front, but this car actually has a panoramic roof and sunroof. So um, the panel is actually full size across the roof, but um, the sunroof portion is only about half and then the rest is a panoramic roof. So let me show it to you right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to open the blinds. So now the sunroof is actually open. Can you see my hand? And the blinds actually extend a little bit further as well. So you've got a nice um, panoramic roof that lets light into the car and helps to brighten up the entire space because this does have a uh, dark colored roof lining. So I think this all helps. Um, if you don't want to have the sunroof open and you just want the blinds open, then you can actually close the sunroof and then it functions just as a panoramic roof, which I think is probably my preferred configuration because in Singapore, it can get pretty hot. Uh, this obviously has UV coating on it, so you don't get uh, too sunburnt, but uh, uh, I think this is a nice configuration because the sun is actually blazing right now outside but I'm still quite comfortable in the back seats here. Um, going back to the cabin, you do have rear air conditioning vents and USB ports. Um, however, these do not have a dedicated climate control system at the rear so they will just follow whatever temperature is set from the front. Um, the red stitching and Alcantara story be continues to the rear here. So um, the front and the rear do look quite um, in line in terms of styling. So nice sporty seats at the back as well. And then you've also got these um, isofix points which are perfect for 
attaching a child seat. And I think in this current configuration, you've definitely got enough space for even a rearward facing uh, child seat without having to push the front seats too much in front. So I think all in all, uh, if you consider the um, decent sized boot in the form of, a, of course, the, 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 the car being an estate or being a wagon has a very nice boot, very good loading aperture. Um, and then if you consider the leg room that you have in the rear here, um, it's actually amazing to think that all this is based on the Octavia platform, which is supposed to kind of be the entry level car. Um, but honestly, it functions almost on par with cars like, for example, the Passat, you know. When you look at a car like this, you, you immediately think of a mid-sized car, but actually no, it is still based on the entry-level platform, which I think is really, really amazing. Um, what else is amazing about the car is the fact that this 2-litre engine is actually the EA888 engine, which of course, for those of you guys out there who are familiar with car engines, this is a legendary engine, and this is uh, one of the most well-known and uh, the most uh, long-standing engines in the VW group lineup. So we're quite excited to take it for a drive. Let's jump back into the driver's seat and head out on the road. Now we are back in the driver's seat of the car. And uh, before we get going, there are a few things that I want to show you. Um, and one of the cool things about um, the Skoda Octavia Combi RS is actually its modular uh, dynamic chassis control. So this is actually a, uh, let me turn down the air conditioning span speed first. So right, so if you press mode, and you go into your drive mode selectors, you can actually go into custom and actually adjust your driving settings. And there are quite a number of driving settings you can adjust from this menu actually, which I think is pretty cool um, based on the fact that most cars in this segment would not be allowing you to adjust these, these sort of things and this many things. Uh, one of the main things you can control, of course, is your dynamic chassis control. So in the menu, it actually, is shortened to be called DCC. And what DCC allows you to do is to allow you, is that you can actually adjust your comfort level, which I think loosely speaking translates to stiffness level. Um, and there are actually 15 different steps or levels that you can adjust this to, which is so cool. I mean, most cars in the market, you'll probably be able to adjust between like comfort and sport basically a more comfortable setting and a less comfortable setting but a sportier setting but this one allows you to really really go into detail and there's actually 15 different steps so if you think about the um, entire spectrum from the most uh, soft to the sportiest um, the, 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 the softest being zero and the sportiest being 100 your standard sport mode would kick in at about 75 and your comfort mode would kick in by default around 25 so you can play with it anywhere along the spectrum. Of course, things like your steering, your drivetrain um, can all be adjusted as well. Uh, you can also adjust your engine sound, which um, uh, I know some of you might be against this, but this car does utilize a little bit of a piped in sound, um, a sort of a sound amplifier for the engine. So uh, if you're not so fond of that, you can just keep it at normal or you can turn it off it's completely up to you. But for me, I'm going to put it in spot. Um, and in terms of my DCC settings, I'm going to leave it right in the middle so that we have the most moderated um, test specifications. All right. So with that, let's move out and head for our drive. All right. So to get some specifications out of the way, this car, like I mentioned earlier, runs on an EA. 888 engine um, which is very very well utilized across the entire VW group whether it's a Volkswagen, Skoda or Audi car um, generally speaking if it's a four cylinder turbocharged two liter application it is probably the EA888 and I think this engine has kind of proved itself to be um, I think you could almost call it bulletproof because it's been in the market for a very very long time and uh, it's still very good. Uh, of course, you know, with the different generations, they are updated. So this is in the third generation now, um, but still a very good engine. Um, but I digress a little bit because uh, going back to the specifications, this is a two liter turbocharged four cylinder. And uh, this engine will put out about 240-ish brake horsepower 
along with 370 newton meters of torque which is actually quite a lot for a car like that and uh, that allows the Combi RS to go from 0 to 100 in about 6.7 seconds and this is of course front wheel drive um, which is all well and good of course if it were rear wheel drive it would probably be even better but I think there are other advantages that come along with front wheel drive as well so as a performance sort of a performance car of course uh, being you know, doing a 0 to 100 time of 6.7 seconds doesn't make it an outright performance car. But right off the bat, you can see that this is a car that wants to go, it wants to be driven. And I think, especially in terms of the steering feel, I think it's actually very, very pleasant because unlike some of the modern cars today, which deliberately make the steering weight very, very light in, in an effort to make the car easy to drive, this particular car has stuck with a slightly heavier steering feel which doesn't make it difficult to drive in town but it makes it a whole lot more enjoyable to drive when you are up at speed and I think it has this very driver oriented feel to the steering and I think that's all very very pleasant uh, let me get to a more open stretch of road and I can share with you a little bit more about its acceleration so I'm not sure whether it's um, it's because of the horsepower that the car has been tuned to uh, because we have tried the same engine on various other car models um, utilizing the same engine and somehow it's been um, in some of the other car models the, this particular setup feels a little bit rough uh, around the edges but in the Octavia Combi RS I must say that the car does feel a little bit more refined actually um, not entirely sure why, but it just feels that way. So I'm actually quite pleased with the fact that it feels quite smooth, quite nice for a four-cylinder. Um, the other interesting thing that I feel really helps the Combi RS stand out from the rest of its segment is also the fact that um, in Singapore, this car in the current CUE climate costs about $245,000 to purchase and that's not um, cheap by any means but I think there is still a lot of value that can be derived from the Combi RS if you consider that for about the same price you could be purchasing cars like the CLA the entry level CLA um, or the 1.5 liter A3 and these are kind of two cars that I've picked out in this segment because despite having a better brand or despite being a more prestigious brand so to speak um, what you get are very entry-level drivetrains and for the same amount of money you've got so much car in the Combi RS in terms of the way the car performs because those cars are all sub 200 horsepower and you've got very um, very entry levels of torque you know around the 200 newton meter kind of range this is 370 newton meters this is this is not a like I said it's not an all out performance car per se but it is definitely no slouch oh man the guy in front of me is really slow really holding up traffic oh my god this guy is terrible Let me just check my settings. So I think I should be in sport. So let's put the car in sport. And you've actually got quite a lovely sound to the car. Um, I, I don't care if it's amplified. <laughs> At the end of the day, if it brings you enjoyment, it works, right? And I think there's still a lot of satisfaction to be derived from the sound that is piped in. Um, I, I think aside from the fact that the, that the sound is piped in, it's also piped in in a way that's quite uh, quite aligned with how the engine is revving at that current point in time. So I don't really see a problem there because honestly, if you if you put a random driver in the car and you don't let the person know that this is a piped in sound, they might not actually realize that it's a piped in sound. So I think that's all well and good. 
Um, I still want to show you a little bit of the acceleration the car is capable of, but unfortunately the roads are a little bit congested today, so if you'll just bear with me, we'll just make this roundabout or this U-turn and then we'll see what we can do on the back straight. Um, but yes, um, I guess, you know, in the interest of time, I'll just give my final thoughts first. Uh, what I think the Skoda Octavia Combi RS has for it is once again a extremely unique blend of performance, drivability, and practicality. So this is really the kind of car that you would have no problem ferrying your family around in. But at the same time, when you want to have a little bit of fun, when you want to take the car up for road trips um, on longer distances at higher speeds, this is a car that will perform. And this is a car that's more than capable of that kind of performance. So let's allow the car to stretch its legs a little bit. That is actually really, really pleasant. So if you decide to spend your $245,000 on an entry-level premium luxury continental car, this is what you'll be missing out on. <laughs> so right, um, with that, um, I've come to the end of my review. And as usual, if you have any questions about the car, uh, please leave them in the comments section below. I will be more than happy to answer those questions. And once again, um, if you are thinking about selling your car in Singapore uh, or to consign your car for sale, be sure to check out our link in the description box below because through that link, we will be able to provide you the best code possible for your used car or help you find the best price on the consignment market. So definitely check out the link if you are looking to sell a car. And uh, if not, please take care of yourself. Stay safe and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.